Double replacement reactions are where you take two compounds and you switch partners, okay? So the positive ion here goes with the negative ion over here. Positive ion goes with the negative. So as I mentioned before, this is like the OI part, outer, inner. So you get AD and CB. So if we look at an actual equation, this is one that um, we did in class with the yellow precipitate. Potassium goes over here with nitrate, so we get potassium nitrate. Lead 2, when you have a transition metal and the Roman numeral, it stays with it. So lead 2, iodide. So it's easiest to write the products when you have the names. But now you've got to pay attention when you're writing formulas because you still have to go back to the whole charge thing. So potassium is a plus 1, iodine is a minus 1, so we get Ki plus, all right, lead, remember that 2 tells us it's plus 2, nitrate is minus 1, so we flip those and get 1 to 2, so PbNO32, potassium again is plus 1, nitrate is minus 1, so we get KNO3 for potassium nitrate, and then our lead plus 2 and iodine minus 1, flip those, we get PBI2. So this is our double replacement reaction. So here we have sodium chloride plus silver nitrate. So you can see sodium nitrate, silver chloride. Now, which one of these is the precipitate? What we're going to do is look at our solubility rules to determine our precipitates. So we look at our products, remember products are on the right, and we look up the anions in the solubility rules. So we're going to look at that in just a second. So if your product is insoluble, that means it is a precipitate, it does not dissolve in water. So it gets an S for its state of matter. If it's soluble, it will dissolve in water and you have an aqueous solution. So that one would not be a precipitate. So let's look at our solubility rules. They're on page six with your types of reactions. So in this particular e example here, we have sodium chloride. Now I'm using my charges. They're all plus one and minus one. We get sodium nitrate and silver chloride. So remember to use your charges from the periodic table. Alright, so looking at my products over here, okay, I have nitrate and I have chloride. So let's start with nitrates. In my solubility rules, I see nitrates. And it says all nitrates are soluble. So nitrate is going to be aqueous. It is not going to be a precipitate. Then I look at chlorides, and I see right here all chlorides except silver. So all chlorides are soluble except silver chloride. So that means silver chloride is insoluble. That means it gets an S, and that means that silver chloride is my precipitate. Let's look at that lead iodide example. So here's our equation. All right, potassium iodide plus my lead nitrate gives me potassium nitrate and lead, oops, and lead iodide. And of course, we do need to balance that equation. I forgot that. Okay, so let's look at our products over here. All right, we see our nitrates, and we know that all nitrates are soluble. So that's going to be aqueous. Then we look at iodides. All chlorides, bromides, and iodides except silver, lead, and mercury. Okay, so they're soluble. So that means that lead iodide is insoluble. So that means that that one is my precipitate. Now when we do this, we can also write what we call a net ionic equation. Okay, so a net ionic equation is only going to include the ions that react. 
ions that do not react are what we call spectators. So here's our sodium chloride example again, sodium chloride plus silver nitrate. We've already determined that sodium nitrate is aqueous and silver chloride is soluble, or I'm sorry, is a solid. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so what we're going to do now is to break all of our aqueous species into ions. So the aqueous species are the ones with the AQ. So we're going to break those into ions. So we get sodium ion plus chlorine. And remember, these are charges coming from the periodic table. Now we're going to break up silver nitrate. So silver is plus one. Nitrate is minus one. You can put that in parentheses if you want to. Now, sodium nitrate is also aqueous. Now, when we get to silver chloride, remember that this was our precipitate and it's a solid. So we do not break that apart. Now, if we look at what's going on here, you can see that on both sides of this equation, I have sodium plus one, and I have, uh, let's see, where is it? I have nitrate. So those don't actually participate in the reaction. What our reaction is here is just forming this silver chloride. That's the whole purpose of this reaction. So the only reason we have the sodium and the nitrate is to bring the silver and the chlorine together. All right, so they don't actually participate in our reaction. They are just spectators. They're just watching. So we can cancel them out because they appear on both sides. So our net ionic equation is going to be what's left. So our chloride ion plus our silver ion react to form silver chloride. So this is my net ionic equation. Let's look at our lead example. Nope, sorry, different example. Um, now this is an acid-base neutralization. It's a special type of double replacement. If you consider water as H-O-H, so you still have two H's, one O, you can see how the H and the O-H got together and the Na and the Cl got together. Now the state of matter for water is liquid. Okay, so we have to take that into account. So we're going to break all of our aqueous species into ions. So HCl is aqueous. So that's going to be H plus plus Cl minus. Sodium hydroxide is also aqueous. So Na plus plus OH minus. All right, then sodium chloride is aqueous. They're all just being ionized in water. They're all just floating around. And then water is a liquid, so we have to leave it as H2O. Now what spectators do you see? We see sodium on both sides, and we see chlorine on both sides. So our net ionic equation is H plus plus OH minus, see we have our H plus plus OH minus, gives us water. So an acid-base neutralization is so that we form a salt and water. But what it comes down to really is forming the water. You can also do this with a gas. All right, so here we have our sodium hydrogen carbonate plus hydrochloric acid. This was our um, experiment that we did um, with the stoichiometry. We get sodium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. So let's break all of our aqueous species into ions. Now notice that our baking soda here is a solid, our sodium hydrogen carbonate. Whoops. So we leave that as a solid. Our HCl is aqueous, so we break it into hydrogen ion and chlorine ion. Our sodium chloride is aqueous. So we break that into sodium ion and chloride ion. CO2 is a gas, so we have to leave it as a gas. And water is a liquid, so we leave it as a liquid.
Now, what spectators do you see? I only see one. I see chlorine. That's the only spectator ion that we have. That means that our net ionic equation is going to be our NaHCO3 plus hydrogen ion yield sodium ion, carbon dioxide, and water. So we write NaHCO3 solid plus hydrogen ion gives us sodium ion, CO2, oops, gas, and H2O. And there's your net ionic equation when you have a gas.